Okay, so this video is going to be a short explanation of what the physics Nobel Prize of 2022 is all about. Um, which means we first will go into entanglement, which is the, the fundamental principle here for all the rest. And then to applications with the Bell inequalities and quantum teleportation. All within 10 minutes. Go. The, the thing about this video is it wasn't even supposed to happen. It was not planned. But uh, when I heard that Anton Zeilinger had won the Nobel Prize, I was so excited that I decided I had to stop everything and produce this video because he was the first Austrian physicist to win a Nobel Prize since Wolfgang Pauli in 1945. So that's a huge deal if you're an Austrian physicist like me. Okay, okay, um, you, you probably know already that quantum mechanics is the description of um, essentially small particles like electrons, photons, atoms and everything at that scale. They behave very differently in many regards than um, normal objects that we are aware of and that um, we know. For example, there's one particular thing called entanglement where two particles are connected together so that whatever um, you measure for the first particle will always also happen for the second one. For example, we could take entangled photons, which are particles of light, and measure their polarization. You can think of light as an electromagnetic wave, and the polarization only tells you in which direction the wave is actually jiggling, so up and down, or left, right, or anything in between. And when you then measure the polarization of one photon, and it has an up-down polarization, you already know that the second photon has the exact same polarization direction. Entanglement actually has an interesting history. There were some physicists who had been um, founding members of quantum mechanics, but who later became very discontent with what the interpretation of it had become. The most famous of these is certainly the EPR paper, which Einstein wrote together with his colleagues Podolsky and Rosen. It came up with this concept of local reality, what does it mean? Local means that two objects cannot influence each other instantaneously, but any signal, any interaction can at most move with the speed of light from one to the other. And reality in this context means that any measurement outcome would already exist before the measurement. Makes a lot of sense, right? But quantum mechanics works differently. Now the EPR argument is, look, quantum mechanics with this concepts of entanglement and spooky action at a distance violate our, our concepts of local realism. This is weird, this can't be. There must be something behind that. There must be some hidden variables that control what the measurement outcome will be. And we might not be able to understand them and to calculate them, but they must be there. Also an important note, while entanglement is in a sense instantaneous, it does not allow you to transmit some signals or some message in an instantaneous fashion. Uh, you, you might think, why not take two polarized photons and move them very far apart? And then, whatever you get on your photon, the other photon has as well. Why can we not use that to transmit the message? The measurement result that you get with your photon, you cannot choose what it is, what it will be. It's, it's random. And so at best, what you could do is transmit a random message of white noise, which is not a message at all. Unfortunately for Einstein, quantum mechanics worked really well and nobody was uh, interested a lot in, in philosophical questions. And it wasn't until the 1960s that another physicist called John Bell took it up again. And remarkably, he could show that these hidden variables and entanglement and all this spooky stuff isn't just a philosophical debate, but you can actually perform an experiment to test it. And it goes like this. The basic idea is very simple. You take two entangled particles, separate them so far apart that they cannot influence each other at the speed of light. And then you measure them in different directions. So for example, you take photons and you measure their um, polarizations. And then you analyze how well these results agree. So their so-called correlation. If you assume local realism, any correlation must be random, but it must adhere to the rules of probability. And this means that you can formulate a number of inequalities that must always hold. For example, 
you have three different outcomes, A, B, and C. The probability for A and not B would then be this area. The probability for B and not C would be this area. And the probability for A and not C would be this area. As you can see, this area is completely contained within the other two. So we can formulate an inequality like this. And even if we know nothing about the probabilities for the outcomes themselves, we can formulate these inequalities for the correlations between them. And why does this not apply to quantum mechanics? Simply put, because quantum mechanics can cheat. If you remember, entanglement told us that if you get a measurement outcome for particle 1, then you also get the same for particle 2. So if for, for directions that are just slightly rotated against each other, you can get huge correlations which are impossible to achieve assuming local realism. So if you perform these experiments and you do measure a violation of the inequality, then you know that the quantum prediction is correct and there are no hidden variables. And that's exactly what all three Nobel laureates for this year have done and have achieved. John Clauser did the first experiments in the 70s. Alain Aspé improved upon them greatly and closed a lot of the loopholes in the 1980s, while uh, Anton Zeilinger did some more refined uh, versions of these and was able in 2015 to close even the last loopholes. Oh, the result! Quantum mechanics is right. Apparently the universe does not obey to local realism. While Anton Zeilinger did significant work on some Bell inequality type experiments, his masterpiece is without a question quantum teleportation. And <laughs> that's one of the experiments where before explaining what it is, you have to start with what it isn't. It's not Star Trek-like teleportation of people or matter, it's just transmission of information from one carrier to another. This has led to some tongue-in-cheek remarks that it's more like quantum faxing than quantum teleportation. And it's not entirely wrong, but we'll come back to that later. So again, what you need is an entangled pair of particles that you share between sender and receiver. We'll call that A and B. And also another particle, C, which uh, carries the state that you want to teleport. So the first step, and uh, this is the step where all the magic is, is performing a so-called Bell measurement. Uh, in essence, it means you, perf you entangle the pair you hold, so A and C, and then perform a measurement, but not of the state of the particles themselves, but of the state of the entanglement. So the end result of this is that the particles held by the sender, A and C, are now entangled, while the particle at the receiver, B, now has a modified version of the desired state. And this modification is, uh, in principle, very easy to fix, but you have to know exactly which kind of modification it is. So you need a classical line of communication from sender to receiver to tell them the outcome of the measurement at the sender. And this is again the catch that prevents uh, superluminal communication. What we get at the receiver is a completely random modification of the state that we actually want to teleport. We cannot choose what we will get as a measurement outcome. Also remember that you already need the particles to be in place. So the carriers of the state, the carriers of the information, already have to be there. In a sense, like the sheet of paper at the sender and the receiver at from a faxing machine. The original quantum state, which was in particle C, disappears at the time of the Bell measurement and reappears in, uh, at least in a modified form, at the receiver. Also, the carriers themselves are indistinguishable by nature, so you cannot really tell apart two photons or two, two electrons from another. Which means you have the appearance of the perfect copy of what used to be at C and the original disappears. It's kind of like teleportation. So while, while the details and, and the applications are really cool, what I really find striking about this, this story of entanglement is that it began with, hey, look, we have this completely absurd thing. This means our theory must be wrong. And we went to, look, we have this completely absurd thing. How can we turn that into an application? 